Elite Dangerous is one of the more complex video games you can choose to immerse yourself in and that complexity isn't helped by the fact that the games tutorial does little to teach you how to actually play the game beyond faster than light travel, docking and firing weapons. When you couple all that with the fact that the Elite community, as friendly as it is, also has somewhat of a language all of its own that it uses to talk about the game it can all rapidly seem like something of an unassailable barrier when you're new. In actual fact the complexity of the game is one of its big appeals to a lot of the old time players but if you're new to the galaxy of Elite then fear not. In this new player guide we're going to drop some quick and punchy tips to help get you started. If you enjoy this video hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications as that stuff really helps the channel and if you'd like to further support our work you'll also find us on Patreon. Links to everything you need are in the description below. Here we go then. Firstly let's talk about the community. Elite really shines when it's played in a group and as I've already mentioned Elite Dangerous has a language and a culture all of its own. Here are some of the basics. Elite players refer to themselves and other players of Elite as Commanders. This is usually abbreviated to CMDR. Elite players will often start or open a text comment with the characters 07. 07 in the Elite community is an emoji signifying a salute and is generally used as a mark of mutual respect and acknowledgement. The O signifies a characters head, the 7 being an arm and a hand offering up a salute. The toast rack and the mail slot refers to the opening at the front of the larger space stations where spaceships fly in and out of to reach the interior. The mail slot being the rectangular opening itself, the toast rack being the protective grid like superstructure on the outside face of the opening cuz well it looks like a toast rack. While we're on the subject of elite specific language allow me to familiarise you with the phrase loop of shame. The loop of shame refers to the overspeed and inability to slow down you sometimes get when approaching a planet, station or signal source too fast. You'll sweep past the object you're looking to approach and be well unable to stop, soaring past it at superluminal speeds and forced to loop back on yourself to approach the target again, hopefully this time with a bit less throttle. I'm uh, somewhat of an expert in this manoeuvre myself. Everybody does it and you'll often hear it called other names such as the victory lap or my personal favourite the unscheduled gravity assisted planetary dark side reconnaissance sweep. I'm a big fan of that one. The Super Cruise Assist module is not an autopilot and is by no means a guarantee of never seeing the wrong side of a planet. The key word here is assist. Next listen to my words. There is no free anaconda at Hutton Orbital. It's a troll meme, don't fall for it. Now for some more general tips. Never fly without the funds available to rebuy your ship. The rebuy cost is shown in the first tab on the right hand panel in your ship. If your ship is destroyed and you don't have enough money to rebuy it it's gone. That's it. All your engineered modules, everything. Don't say we didn't warn you. It's been our experience that the game absolutely comes alive when it's shared with others. Find a player group or a squadron that shares your playstyle and philosophy and join them. The shared knowledge and comradeship they can bring can't be overstated. If you're going to stay in the bubble or in Colonia then find yourself a home system and use it as an anchor. The more you stay attached to a system the more reputation you build with the factions in that system and the better missions they'll give you with better rewards and payouts. Scan anything and everything you can, especially other ships, either in supercruise or in normal space. You'll accumulate data from those scans that is a vital resource when it comes to engineering your ship later in the game. Kind of in the same vein, when you blow a ship up they drop cargo pods and materials. Grab the materials whenever possible for the same reason. Whenever you arrive in a star system activate your discovery scanner. The community refers to this as honking. The data it gathers is useful and you can get paid for it as well. Your life in Elite Dangerous can be complemented and aided by a myriad of third party tools. 
I won't list all the tools here that you could be using but if you seek out the Elite Dangerous Market Connector, create yourself a profile on the websites Elite Dangerous Star Map and Inara.cz and bookmark them along with eddb.io then you could do a lot worse. I'll link the tools I've just mentioned in the description below this video. If you're a member of a community or squadron within the game then they'll help you with the other tools that fit with what you're after. Elite likes blue zones and indicators and oftentimes those blue zones will help you. On the system map you'll see some planets are ringed by a blue line that means you can land on them. If the blue line has little towers coming off of it that means there's a starport or an installation there. The system map also has an orrery. It shows you the orbits and current positions of all the bodies in the system relative to your own position in the system. When you're orbiting a planet in supercruise if you keep the nose of your ship inside the blue zone on the climb ladder on the HUD you'll move much much faster. The closer you keep your nose to 0 degrees the faster you'll go. When you're manoeuvring your ship in normal space or supercruise it will be much more manoeuvrable if you keep your throttle and therefore your speed inside the blue zone. When you arrive in a star system the arrival star will show red in your central radar screen. As you move away from it it will turn orange. When it does it's safe to start your next jump without overheating and damaging your modules. If you're out exploring it's worth checking the codex in the right hand panel of your ship. It will offer hints on where you might be able to find all sorts of things in the galaxy. Don't be afraid of the Thargoids. Generally speaking if you haven't done anything to upset them and you keep your distance they're often just curious and will leave you alone after working out what you are. Big ships aren't necessarily better. The small and medium ships all have as much value as well. Find the ships that suit your playstyle. Fleet carriers can jump 500 light years at a time. 500 light years is a very long way. Don't land on a fleet carrier that you don't absolutely trust. If you're interdicted the mass of the attacking vessel can stop you getting back into supercruise. This is called mass locking. If you want to get away target a neighbouring star system and jump into hyperspace. Hyperspace jumps can't be mass locked. Tutorials including this one can be useful but ultimately there is rarely one absolute correct way of doing something in Elite Dangerous. Find a method that works for you that you enjoy. Follow some useful social media feeds. If you don't like or use social media consider creating an account just for your commander. There's lots of useful tips and assistance on social media and Frontier often uses it to drop hints about things happening in the game. Don't be in a rush. Enjoy the early parts of the game and understand that Elite has no end game. It won't corridor you and it won't lead you by the nose. The game is all about finding your way in the galaxy. Ultimately Elite Dangerous is all about the journey not the destination. So there we go. It's by no means an extensive list. Elite is a huge game and we'd never be able to cover it all in one video but hopefully that's given you at least some useful new player tips. And if you've got some tips of your own that you want to pass on to new players yourself leave them in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video consider subscribing to the channel and look at one of our other videos linked on screen right now.